So what I want to do is though, um, I want to take this and basically I want to always use the same value. So otherwise we always recalculate the random numbers. So I say, for example, uh, this is my, I just call it whatever G. Um, and then what I can do is I can put this in a loop. So do you remember if we want to have an equidist an equidistant set of numbers from a start number to an end number with like say a hundred values, the function that we can use for that? We did it for the linear regression for the remember x x mm -hmm. equals it's lin space. So what we do is np dot lin space. And then um, we say, well, we want something between zero and let's say 0 0.5, right? So that's 50%. And we want say 40 values. Just, just guessing. And so what we can do is we can see R equals cumulative product. Now, now we don't necessarily want to calculate the cumulative product. We could just calculate the product because we don't want to always draw the charts, right? So all we need is the last value, which is just a product rather than a cumulative product. Okay. And so actually we've got this F here as well. So what we actually need to do is we need to get that out of the, out of this thing. So what we actually need to do is G times F. Yeah. And then one plus. Okay. So we need to get rid of this here because otherwise we won't be able to, to run it in our loop. Right. So we've got this F, then we loop through the different F's. And what we also want to do is we want to collect just those numbers. And so we go R's equals this, and then uh, we can do R's dot append R and probably, oh yeah, we can just use this lint space. So if we run this, we made a There's little mistake here. Oh yes, here. Uh, we need to go bracket. Okay. So now we got this and now what we can do is we can actually plot these R's here. And that's an interesting one. <laughs> so, so the first thing we want to do is just go in space this. Okay. And you can see that, you know, remember we looked at this fraction around the 2% mark and that was relatively high. And you can see this here. This is 10%. Uh, yeah. And here around whatever this is 2% or so it's pretty high, but unfortunately, you know, this, this is at one, 1 million or this is like at 6 million, the final value. But unfortunately that doesn't help us much. So let's just do a different plotting just to see where those values are. And you can see here, it's just this weird thing that there's some numbers. So what we want is more resolution in this area, right? Because here it's just pretty, you know, it goes pretty low. So instead of 0 0.5, let's just go 0 0.1. Okay. And instead of 40, let's use maybe here as well, 0 0.1. And instead of 40, maybe use 400 and then do the 400 here as well. 400. Ah, there you go. That looks a lot better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, see how we are somewhere in the 0 0.2, 0 0.25 range. That's our maximum that we can achieve. And look at this. It's 1E14. It's like, um, incredibly high this is like if we start investing one dollar and we have a hundred thousand coin tosses we can end up with just unbelievably high number <laughs> that's fascinating isn't it but what's more important here is this i mean look at this chart and what else do you see apart from the fact that we just get this humongous number out of it uh yeah i mean like that this is like the the only kind of how to say like percentage in a way where it's where it has like the biggest impact so to say yeah 
Well, basically seeing here is the margin for error is just phenomenally small, right? Mm -hmm. If we, if we invest a little bit on, on the sides here, we end up with next to nothing. Isn't it a fascinating result? Yeah, definitely. Now it's not quite like that. Okay. Because what we see here is literally one, one to the 14. This is like trillions, right? So it's like $400 trillion we end up with. <laughs> That's like the all, all wealth of the whole world. 400 trillion. You know, if this would be a million here or a, even a billion, we wouldn't even see it. So a better way to plot this is actually plotting a log scale on the y axis. And the way that's done in Python is just we go, plt dot semi log y okay and we can plot this again and so now this makes this is a lot better okay and and, and look at <laughs> look at this is basically what you what you will see here is that that we we, we can't even see the, the the zero line here so so because even if we go to 10%, our wealth basically at around 4% or so diminishes to such an extent. See, this is 10 to the minus 97 here. <laughs> it goes that low. So what we actually want to do is probably even go a lot further down. So we go maybe 0 0.005, right? And let's do this here as well. 0 0.05. So, so, so we go now from zero to a maximum of 5%. Not six, five. I need to run this first. And then I need to run this. So now this is a bit clearer here. Yeah. See what it basically tells us is, you know, this is 10 to the minus one. There's about 10 to the one. If we invest significantly more than 3%, we're basically getting wiped out. So at 4%, we're effectively down to zero. 10 to the minus 11, yeah? <laughs> so what I want to demonstrate with this is, and this is what I want to finish with today, for this exceptionally simple thing, like a coin toss with a biased coin, which is 1% bias back and forth, the margin for error of how much we would invest in each coin toss is incredibly small. It's actually also quite difficult to determine in your head. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's actually around the 2% mark. So what you will see is if we go to higher numbers here, instead of a hundred thousand, we go to say a million or 10 million, we actually get pretty much to 2%. Yeah. So the actual real solution for this is 2%, yes. <laughs> but because our hundred thousand uh, samples is not enough to get that precisely. We need actually a lot more samples to get it accurately. But the important point here is that with this really simple example, we have a very small margin for error. Now imagine your trade on the stock market and you have prices. They're not just plus or minus. They're like up 2%, down 3%, whatever. And you don't know the probability of of whether it goes up or down here, we know exactly what it is, you know, and it's still not easy to size our positions. When we invest in the market, it's even more complex. And that's what I want to show you here is actually position sizing really matters. So even if you know the odds are in your favor, it doesn't mean you're winning. Yeah. So in this case, if you, if you get the percentage is slightly wrong. Chances are you make no money at all, or you know you get wiped out really quickly. So when we invest in the market, we need to be really, really aware, not just of what strategy we use with entries and exits, but how we size the positions that we use. So this is a really simple, straightforward way to demonstrate how very important it is to do that. It's good, isn't it? It's amazing. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mind blowing stuff.